Black Holes One of the most interesting mysteries of the universe. One can only wonder what is happening there. As shown in Interstellar, our protagonist enters a black hole and gives humanity a leash of hope to survive and prosper. But, how accurate is the black hole shown in the film? And what would happen if one ever went into one? But before we get into that, let us cover the basics. What is a black hole? Welcome to Star Extreme. There is a little space for everyone here. Karl Schwarzschild, many may not know, but this German physicist and astronomer was a friend of Albert Einstein. But very few know that Schwarzschild was the first one to give the exact solution for Einstein's field equations of general relativity, leading to the possibility of black holes. The solution was a simple one, where he described of how space-time is curved around spherical objects in space, in turn explaining of how harder it is to escape the gravitational force of a small dense star, and shrinking the star further will give us a curvature so great that nothing, not even light, can escape. Giving birth to the term Schwarzschild radius, the distance from a given point where nothing would escape. At the time, Many physicists denied the possibility that such a dense object with such space-time curvature could exist. It would be in the 1970s when Schwarzschild's ideas would be accepted and developed further. But first, here's a story. In 1964, in order to search for celestial sources of X-ray, two short rockets with Geiger counters were launched above the thick air of the atmosphere. The devices scanned the sky and identified one intense X-ray source in the constellation of Cygnus, known today as Cyg X-1. Its true nature created a mystery of how the source had extremely fast variability, on timescales less than a second, indicating that the X-ray emitting region was much smaller than a typical star. In the discovery of the binary companion, allowed the mass of the source to be calculated by comparing it with the size of the companion's orbit. The result was staggering. Sig X1 was smaller than a star, but 15 times more massive. The only solution was Schwarzschild singularity. So in 1967, at one lecture in NASA, American theoretical physicist John Wheeler was discussing general theory of relativity. He kept mentioning gravitationally completely collapsed objects until one of the fed-up audience members suggested black hole. And from that moment onwards, Wheeler adopted it and made it a household name. But how are black holes formed? From stars. You heard that right. Stars are a massive collection of hydrogen atoms that have collapsed from an enormous gas cloud under their own gravity. It begins at the core where nuclear fusion crushes the hydrogen atoms into helium, releasing a humongous amount of energy, which creates radiation pushing against the gravity, maintaining a delicate balance between the two forces. As long as there is balance between the forces and fusion in the core, the star remains stable. But when the balance between radiation and gravity is suddenly broken, the core collapses and within a fraction of a second, the star implodes. Movement starts at a quarter speed of light, feeding even more mass into the core. And then, the star dies causing a supernova explosion, which produces either a neutron star, or if the star is massive enough, the entire core collapses into a black hole. When you look at a black hole, it's a black sphere that's reflecting nothing. But what you are actually looking at is the event horizon. Anything that needs to escape the event horizon needs to be faster than the speed of light. So basically, it's impossible to escape. So, if the black part is the event horizon, where is the whole of the black hole? That's the singularity. But we are not sure what that is either. A singularity might be infinitely dense, with all of its mass concentrated at one single point or it might be completely something else. There are multiple types of black holes, supermassive, stellar, and intermediate. The one shown in interstellar is a supermassive one called Gargantua, supposedly to have the mass 100 million times more than the sun. Christopher Nolan wanted the representation of the black hole to be as real as possible. Hence, 
he took physics Nobel Prize winner Kip Thorne as a consultant for the film. So, how accurate is the depiction of the black hole? Let's break it down. First, the accretion disk. In reality, black holes do have an accretion disk of gas and dust being pulled by the gravity of the black hole. The materials in the disk heat up as they approach the event horizon, producing bright X-rays and gamma rays. This has been shown in the film as one of the key features of the black hole, and the depiction of the accretion disk in the film is quite accurate, reflecting our understanding of materials around the black hole. Second, the event horizon. As we know, the event horizon of a black hole is a point of no return, beyond which anything that gets too close gets sucked in and cannot escape. In Interstellar, the event horizon is depicted as a distorted and shimmering surface that appears to warp the surrounding space. This depiction is partially accurate, as the protagonist in the film gets sucked in but somehow returns from it. Next is the gravitational lensing. One of the most important features depicted in the film is the visually striking feature of Gargantua, the intense gravitational lensing effect that causes the appearance of a bright ring around the black hole, known as the photon sphere. This effect is caused by the black hole's gravity bending and distorting the path of light rays from stars and other objects in the background. The photons bend around the black hole and are focused into a ring, which appears to surround the black hole. This reflects our understanding of the effects of gravity on the path of light and can be considered accurate. The major thing which cannot be considered accurate is the depiction of the size of the black hole. Given its mass, Gargantu is depicted much larger than it should be. In reality, the size of the black hole is directly proportional to its mass, so a black hole with the mass of Gargantu would be much smaller and less visually impressive than the one depicted in the movie. Coming to the main part, what would happen if one entered a black hole? As we know it is a point of no return, but what would really happen? Depends, if you enter a stellar black hole, you might get spaghettified. Your body will be squeezed thinner and straighter until you have reduced into thin plasma and into mere atoms never to be seen again. But if you enter a supermassive black hole, as shown in the film, you might experience crossing the event horizon, where slowly the blackness would envelop you. And once you are inside, the laws of space and time are broken so much that even time travel is possible. But you would reach singularity, maybe dead or alive. The singularity has no surface or size. Honestly, nobody truly knows what a singularity is. So the film has taken some creative liberties to depict what actually happens in a black hole. But in reality, there are high chances you might die. Kip Thorne, at a lecture in Cardiff University, even compared Dim 87 to Gargantua and showed why the deception of the black hole in the film is accurate. The image captured by the Event Horizon Telescope shows the black hole from close to its poles, whereas in the film we got a frontal view of the black hole Kip Thorne further explained, Christopher Nolan omitted the brightening of the black hole because the human eye would likely not be able to discern the brightness differences on the two sides of the hole when the overall brightness is so extreme. So while the black hole in Interstellar is not exactly the same, it's almost correct and can be regarded as one of the most accurate depictions of a black hole in popular culture, considering our current understanding of the behavior of black holes. And as the Event Horizon Telescope will continue to take images, guiding science fiction to produce more accurate visions of black holes than ever before. What do you guys think? Drop in your comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Star Extreme, because with us, there is a little space for everyone.